Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is, Who is my neighbor? In his gospel, Dr. Luke records two of the most famous parables Jesus told. The parable about the prodigal son and the parable about the good Samaritan are only found in Luke's gospel. Jesus was well known for the stories that he told that frequently had an unexpected ending. Today we'll examine the parable of the Good Samaritan. It all began with a lawyer who by his own admission was trying to test Jesus. It's never a good idea to try to test Jesus. Jesus always knew when people were trying to trick him. Jesus is wise enough to tell a story that exposes the heart of the person who was trying to trap him. Listen to how the Gospel of Luke records the attitude and the question the lawyer asked Jesus. A lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. Clearly the lawyer's intent is to test Jesus. Jesus replied to the lawyer's question by asking him a question. Jesus often asks questions. Luke chapter 10 and verse 26. What is written in the law? How do you read it? The lawyer was ready to answer Jesus' question and quickly said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. The lawyer answered correctly because he quoted from the before books in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says exactly this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. And then Moses added in Leviticus, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19 and verse 18. Jesus replied to the lawyer, by saying, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. Luke chapter 10 and verse 28. If the lawyer had just accepted Jesus' reply, he would not have been embarrassed publicly. But because he could not agree with Jesus, he ended up exposing the hardness in his heart. I'm sure he regretted asking Jesus the second question he asked. Uh, Luke says the lawyer wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Luke chapter 10 and verse 29. In response to that question, Jesus told a story that exposed exactly what is wrong with religious thinking. He said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 30, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Ju Jerusalem is situated about 800 meters above sea level, and Jericho is situated about 200 meters below sea level. The journey from Jericho is about 27 kilometers down a dangerous road winding through the Judean desert that descends a thousand meters to the Jordan Valley. Today there is a modern road, a four-lane highway between the two cities. But many years ago, I traveled down the original road, and I know from first-hand experience how dangerous that journey must have been. Jesus continued the story by saying, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell amongst robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Luke chapter 10 and verse 30. Notice the man was going down and not up. This most likely means his business in Jerusalem was finished. 
He had sold his goods and he was traveling home with his cash in hand. The man was beaten to the point that if no one helped him, the desert sun itself would soon finish him off. Then Jesus said, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw the wounded man, he passed by on the other side. Notice that the priest was going down the road. It is important to observe that the priest was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho and not from Jericho to Jerusalem. You might have heard teachers say that the priest did not stop by to help the man because he would have become unclean and unable to perform his priestly duties. The problem with this thought is that the priest was going down, not up. He was on his way home. In other words, his duty as a priest had already been completed. He had no religious excuse not to stop and help the man. Next, Jesus said, likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him. He too passed by on the other side. Luke chapter 10 and verse 32. Like the priest, the Levite sought to distance himself from the wounded man. Then Jesus said, a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Jesus is a man of compassion. The Samaritan's compassion moved him to care for the robbed man. He went to him and bound up his wounds, poured on oil and wine, And then he sat him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Luke chapter 10 and verse 34. But the Samaritan went even further than that. The next day he took out two denera and gave them to the innkeeper saying, Take care of him and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Luke chapter 10 and verse 35. Two denera was approximately two days' wages. The man was generous to this one who had been robbed and beaten. After Jesus finished telling this gripping story, he turned to the lawyer and asked him, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell amongst robbers? Luke chapter 10 and verse 36. Reluctantly, The lawyer replied, I suppose the one on whom mercy was shown. Luke chapter 10 and verse 37. Notice that the lawyer could not say the word Samaritan. Then Jesus said, you go and do likewise. The parable of the good Samaritan had an unexpected twist. It starts off by asking Who is my neighbor? And it ends up by asking, What kind of neighbor am I? Jesus identified our neighbor as people who are hungry, people who are thirsty, people who are strangers, people who need clothing, people who are in prison, people from a different ethnicity, people who speak a different language, people from other religions. Jesus invites us to have compassion on all the people of the world. Before we leave this powerful story, I want us to revisit the lawyer's original question. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. The Bible teaches that eternal life begins with belief, not with duty. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Have you received God's gift of eternal life? Eternal life begins the moment we believe in Jesus. You don't have to wait to die until you know that you to know that you will be with God 
in paradise. Those who receive God's gift of eternal life through Jesus will be with him in heaven forever. Right now, I offer to you the gift of eternal life. Would you believe in Jesus and will you receive Jesus? Receive what he did for you to pay for your sin, to give you God's gift of eternal life. Just pray with me. Jesus, thank you for dying for me in my place. I receive Jesus now as my Savior, and I receive from him the gift of eternal life that he has promised to all who believe in him. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. As you've heard this story, perhaps you identify with the man who has been robbed and beaten. I, too, have been robbed and beaten, and somebody helped me. And God wants to bring a good Samaritan into your life to help you. Perhaps you are fleeing from a country. You're fleeing from a very difficult situation. You've left everything, just the clothes on your back, and you're traveling. God has a provision for you. Somebody will help you along the way. Ask God to send to you a good Samaritan, one who embodies who Jesus is, one who can release the compassion of God upon your life, provide food and shelter for you. You may be caught up not in a war-torn region, but in a natural disaster. Some calamity has come upon the place where you live, whether it's fire or rain or water or wind, mudslides, wherever you are, you need help. And I'm praying that God will bring into your life a good Samaritan and that you yourself will become that good Samaritan and help others who are around you. Thank you, God, for helping people through the difficult moments of life. I uh, sent somebody today watching has a knee pain. I command that left knee pain to go right now in the name of Jesus. You have a very specific pain behind your right eye. It's just up in the, uh, up in the uh, eyelid, above the eyelid, towards your eyebrow. I command that pain to go, that throbbing to stop right now in Jesus' name. If you have been healed of any of these things I've just mentioned, write to us and let us know what God has done for you. And if you prayed with me to receive Jesus as your Savior today, there's some wonderful information we want to release to you. Message me. God bless you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with Living Hope.